Chapter 4.9 is on higher order determinants, and higher order determinants are determinants that are greater than second order, so we'll be looking into third order determinants. And a third order determinant is used when you have a linear system that has three or more variables. So we're looking at the same equation as we did in chapter 4.6, but instead of having to linearly solve this, we can solve these equations through matrices, which are similar to second-order determinants, and we'll be using third-order determinants. So first, we're going to solve for the y. And for the y value, you, you have, it's going to be the same where you have ny over d, so the numerator for the y value over the denominator. When you put in the y values, you're going to substitute the coefficients for the y with the constants from the right hand of the equation. So instead of putting in 3, 5, and negative 1 in the middle row, we'll put in negative 1, negative 10, and 5. And so we can see here for y that the top matrix for the numerator looks like that. With the left column, 2, negative 1, 3 as the x coefficients, the middle column of negative 1, negative 10, 5 as the right hand side coefficients, and the right column of negative 1, 3, negative 6 as the z coefficients. And for the denominator, remember you're just going to use the coefficients from the left hand side for x, y, and z. So the left hand side is the coefficients for x, middle is coefficients for y, and right hand side is the coefficients for z. And so I'm going to solve the denominator matrix for you. And so what you do, the first value you write is you write the 2. And the 2 you just write regularly. So you write the 2, and then you draw your matrices. And what you do is you take the 2, and you cross out its column and its row. So you get to cross out four numbers, and then the remaining four numbers are written inside. So you have 5, 3, negative 1, and negative 6. And so that's how you get the first term of your higher order determinant. And then you have a minus 3. And the three comes from the second or from the middle term of the first row. And it's a negative, just how it is in second order determinants. And similarly to the first term, what you do is you cross out its row and you cross out its column so that the three matrix is negative one, three, three, negative six. And then for the final term, Instead of a negative this term, it's a plus, and you move on the top row. So it's a plus a negative 1, and you draw your matrices. And then, as usual, you cross out the negative 1, the row, and the column. And so the remaining numbers inside the matrix are negative 1, 5, 3, and negative 1. And you will go about solving this just as you do second order determinants where you, we cross multiply inside the matrices. And so you 2 times the negative 30 minus a negative 3. And that's solved by simplifying the second order determination through cross multiplication. And the second term is a negative 3 times uh, 6 minus 9 through cross multiplication. And then the final term is a plus negative 1 times 1 minus 15 through cross multiplication as before. And then it's just simple math from here. You have a negative 54 plus 9 plus 14 to get your final answer of negative 31. But remember, the negative 31 is just for the denominator. It's not the answer to y, it's d equals negative 31. However, I'm not going to solve the nx, ny, and nz for you because that would require so much time and it follows the same format. So this is what they are. So denominator equals negative 31, nx equals negative 93, ny equals 62, and nz equals negative 31. And so then you can, you can solve each of these by yourself. So x equals nx over d, so negative 93 over negative 31. So x equals 3, similarly for y, y equals negative 2, and z equals 1. 
And so we have our solution set of the point 3, negative 2, 1, which is the same as we had solved for in section 4.6. And that is how you simplify higher order determinants.